called the Questioning Queens. I want to save my sprite, said Zara, despairingly. Poor Squeeze Juice. And Queen Sigrak started and she looked at the Squeeze Juice. What happened, said um, Queen Sigrak grimly to your sprite? He got witch blood on him, said Zara. The warriors, soldiers and citizens gave a great gasp of horror and stood back even further from the withered boy. Queen Sigrax was a very great warrior queen, so she would never show fear, but her face turned to a diamond stiffness. A witch, you say, said Queen Sigrax, but witches are extinct, said the deputy to the chief guard. Liar, called a warrior from the crowd. All wizards are liars. I saw the witch dead myself, said Zara. It was definitely a witch, and it gave me this. So I held up his palm to show the green stain in the middle of it. A witch stain, cried the crowd, and they stepped back even further. Cowards, snapped Queen Sigrax. According to legend, witch's blood is only dangerous if it mixes with your blood. Show me that hand, thoughts, boy. So I put his hand out again. Queen Sigrax stared at the green mark. She took a good look at Squeeze Juice too, taking the little bundle he was wrapped in out of Zara's hands and looking at him from all angles. And then she turned to the crowd. It is as I suspect it, said Queen Sigrax, holding up the poor poison sprites so that everyone can see him. And then she lifted her gentle voice to one of ringing hardness. Witches are not extinct and they have returned to the forest. The crowd recoiled in horror. I've been right to arm us all as I, all, all as I, I have done, cried Sigrax. Right to increase our sentries, add to our watchtowers. Tis ah, she said. Now I see why you want, want, might want to visit the stone that takes away magic rather urgently, saw Sonic Tsar, son of Incanzo. It is, as you say, an emergency, for unless your sprite touches the stone to remove the witch mag magic within the next 24 hours, I imagine the sprite will die. Sigrax was a noticing sort of person, and she certainly noticed the tears in Tsar's eyes when she said those words in the shake of his head. No, whispered Tsar, no, he must not die, he will not, he must not, I will not let him. Don't worry, Squeeze Juice, trust me, I won't let that happen. But Squeeze Juice, car and... and and quaking in the queen's hands and st staring up at her stern unchained and unrelenting profile had let out a whimper as he heard these words sycorax sighed sympathetically a queen of warriors must be merciful as well as strong she said and so i shall take you and your sprite to the stone and i very much hope for both your sakes that it will not be too late sycorax handed the bud bundle containing squeeze you to her She's used to her deputy, who held him out at arm's length, shaking, for he did not want to be holding a witch poisoned sprite. But before I take you there, said Sycorax sweetly, I have a few questions to ask you. Uh oh, whispered Caliban, be careful, be very careful, Tsar, of the questioning of queens. You mentioned that you saw a dead witch, said Sycorax. This interests me extraordinarily, for according to legend, witches are hard to kill. So, who killed this witch? And with what? There was a silence. Standing some way behind Queen Sigrax, Wish was waving her arms about frantically to get Tsar's attention and staring at him in an agonised sort of way. Tsar could see the hilt of the enchanted sword poking out from beneath her cloak and with Wish was mouthing something that looked a bit like, I'm on your side. Was she really on his side? Or wasn't she? Tsar didn't know. But in that moment, Tsar realised that just possibly Wish might have so stolen the short sword, not just because she, not because she was a treacherously tricksy traitor of a warrior, but because she didn't want the sword to be captured as well as Tsar. I killed the witch, said Tsar eventually, with my bar with a bow and arrow. Really, said Queen Sigrax, raising an eyebrow, for by complete coincidence, only yesterday I lost a large ancient witch-killing sword from my dungeons. It disappeared, poof, just like that. And ever since my household defenders have been turning the fort upside down looking for it. Do you know anything about that sword, Tsar, son of Incanzo? No, said Tsar. A large ancient sword with the words, once there was witches, but I killed them, written on the blade. I've never seen a sword like that in my life, said Tsar. And do you know where it is now, said Sigrax, disbelievingly. No, said Tsar. How could I when I've never seen it in the first place? You lie, said Sigrax, swift as an adder. I'm not lying, protested Tsar. I am afraid that you are, said Queen Sigrax. I said that Queen Sigrax, you see, was a noticing sort of person. Her sharp, flinty eyes had spotted something um, uh, poking out of one of Tsar's pockets. 
a half full potion. You see, she lovely over of of ne love never lies potion. I know you are lying," said Queen Tickrax, "because that is one of your strange wizard medicine medicines, which changes colour when a person lies." She pointed at the bottle, and the liquid inside was a swirl of darkest indigo, the deep purple that indicated that the person who was touching it was telling a lie. Bother it, thought Tsar. She's as bad as my father. That's the second time today I've been caught out by that beastly love potion. I really must remember not to carry one of the truth drugs around with me. It cramps my style. But how would a warrior queen know about love level never lies potion and what it did? Study your enemy, said Queen Sigrax, as if Tsar had spoken aloud. It is extremely important to study your enemy very carefully. I know a great deal about you wizards and your curses and your wart cunning and your troublemaking poisons, and this knowledge often comes in useful. Queen Sigrax reached forward, removed the bottle of Love Never Lies, a potion from Tsar's pocket, and shook it, watching thoughtfully as the liquid turned back to pale red again. And the fact you were lying tells me that you have seen my sores. You do know where it is. And if you wanted to, you could tell me its whereabouts right now. Search the wizards! Very reluctantly, the warrior guards searched Tsar, but they did not really want to go anywhere near a wizard, wizard with a witch stain. But they were far too frightened of Queen Sigrax to disobey her orders. They found plenty of interesting things in Tsar's pockets. Curses and spells and herbs and, and potions of all sorts. No sword. Hmm, said Queen Sigrax. I wonder what you had done with it. Where is my sword, Tsar, son of Encanzo? I refuse to answer, said Tsar, folding his arms. All right then, said Queen Sigrax calmly. I will make a bargain with you. I had intended to hold you for ransom. I was going to send a message to your father, saying that if he ever wants to see his rude little burglar of a son again, he must give himself up to me. Taking away the magic of a great, the great wizard as Encanzo would be a blow the wizards would find very hard to recover from. Tsar flinched in horror. But, mused Queen Sigrax, if witches have returned to the forest once more, I really am going to need that witch cunning sword. So, said Queen Sigrax briskly, I will be very reasonable. If you give me back my sword, I will take you and your sprite to the stone that takes away magic, and then I will not hold you to ransom for your father after all. I will let you and your sprites and your animals go free. How is that for an offer? Do you promise? said Tsar. Of course I promise, snapped Queen Sigrax, are you questioning the word of a queen? It was a tempting offer. Tsar considered it. He was trapped. He would never be able to overcome so many warriors who were holding him at once, and this would at least get weak squeeze juice carried, uh, cured, and, and then he saw Wish's face again. Wish was making agonised eye movements towards the love level eyes potion in Queen Sigrax's hands. The liquid had turned so indigo, indigo that it was very nearly black. You lie, said Tsar, pointing at the love never lies potion. You lie and I refuse your offer. Queen Sigrax gave a start and looked down at the bottle. Dear, dear, she said good humouredly. That was careless of me. I'm very clever of you, Tsar, Solomon can say. I like an intelligent enemy. It keeps me on my toes. You're quite right. I am lying, Queen Sigrax admitted. I have every intention of holding you to ransom for your father after I've taken you to the stone that takes away magic, whatever you do or say. Wish was so horrified she could not help interrupting, but rule number 13, a warrior should never lie. Queen Sigrax looked at Wish as though she were a slug. Amendment to rule 13, a queen, queen can break the rules, said Queen, queen Sigrax, in pursuit of a higher good. Then what, thought Wish, was the point of the rules in the first place? But she kept this thought to herself. Queen Sigrax put the love never lies potion back in Tsar's pocket. You are a very disobedient boy and you obviously have not been treated firmly enough, said Queen Sakrax, but I think you will find that I am very firm indeed. You need to be given a lesson, Tsar, son of Kanzo, and that is what a prison is for. Tsar so sighed. Why did everybody want to teach him a lesson? Ran to his father Caliban and now this horrible queen. It was very wearing. I shall lock you in my prison, said Queen Sikrax, and I will not take you or your sprite to the stone, she continued in a hard voice, until after you have told me where the sword is. Give the sprite back to the boy. With relief, the deputy handed Squeeze Juice back to Tsar. If you don't tell me where the sword is, you will have to watch your sprite dying in front of you, said Queen Sikrax. As soon as you do tell me, I will take you and your sprite to the stone, and then I will hold you to ransom, and your father, if he is weak enough to love a rude, disobedient child like you, will come here to save you, and I will remove Encanto's magic too. She smiled at Tsar. It was a beautiful smile.
whenever she smiled at Wish, which wasn't often, Wish's whole world lit up with sunshine, but Saw didn't appreciate it. You and your father and your sprites are all going to lose your magic, whatever happens, said Queen Sycrax in that voice, as gently soft as a poisoned arrow. But if you tell me where the sword is, you can at least save your sprite's life. The Queen continued, and you love your sprite, don't you? Love is always a weakness, so I know you'll make the right decision. Saar was trapped. What could he do? Everything was getting out of hand. Squeakers might die all through Zar's fault. His father might lose his magic all through Zar's fault. Look at that. Oh, Mitchell, poor little squeeze shoes in Zar's pocket. Queen of evil, heart of ice, cowardly, ironclad leader of the rabbit heart, shouted Zar, beside himself with anger and fear. Queen Sycrax reddened with annoyance. Nothing much rattled her. She took threats, trickery, even violence in her stride. However, nobody had ever dared speak to her with Zar's sheer disrespectful cheek before. The warriors secretly admired the bravery of this one small wizard who was completely at the mercy of the most ruthless ruler in the forest, but was still throwing insults at her with total abandon. Take this uncivil little wizard and his sprites and his animals to cell number 445, snapped Queen Sycrax. Zar was putting on a brave and angry bold front, but inside he was feeling total despair and helplessness. He fought and bit and struggled, but he was hopelessly outnumbered, and the guards dragged Zar and the snake cats and the sprites away. Zar still cursing, Queen Sycrax at the top of his voice. You're softer than bunny rabbits. You're weaker than water. You're fluffier than the fluffiest little baby dormouse, and my granny could beat you up with one hand tied behind her back what he's yelling but you know yelling isn't going to do any good i have to see what happens